So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelled by the brook Chetron, that is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Verse number seven, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Verse number eight, and the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell. Amen. Amen. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to what? Amen. To sustain thee. Verse number 10, so he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was Amen. gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. I want you to understand something today, that this is a time now for each one of us to move into that special place that God has ordained. It is through trials and tribulations. It is through falling and getting up. But I need you to be propelled today to get to the what kind of place? Amen. Amen. When we define the word there, there, in, at, or to that place or position, calling attention to someone or something, there means used to focus attention on something and express satisfaction or be annoyed because of it. At that place, obedience to move or get to that place. Joy belongs to them that are in the their place, regardless of their circumstances. Today, on December the 4th, we shall see the elements of faith at work as the prophet of God moves in faith and obeys God's commands. Therefore, each of these elements of moving in faith is illustrated in our story in 1 Kings 17. First of all, faith as the assurance of things hoped for that are true when following God's word. Two, faith as the evidence of things not seen, but you still move to that place of believing God. Three, faith as the principle of things of action in the intelligent things controlled by the power of God working on our behalf. Look at your name and say, get to the their place. Here we see God's supernatural power and work in nature and in spiritual things. Here in 1 Kings today, we see that there is a what kind of place? Yeah. Amen. First of all, we see Elijah being fed by ravens, birds of prey, in verses 1 through 7. Elijah sent to Zarephath, a foreign land, verses 8 through 16. Today we see Elijah raising the widow's son from the dead, verses 17 through 24. Today then, the question is, are you there? The their place of obedience to God of creation, the director of our lives, who directs us into that special place today that is called there. I need you to talk to me today, amen, so that you can bless, praise God. Elijah was sent to a place called Shechem, which means to cut off or to cut down. But because he obeyed, he was placed in the their place for God to move in his life and his ministry. Therefore, when we as a people of God here in the chapel of praise get there, we are also assured of the Lord's blessings and his divine provisions for our lives. Look at your neighbor and say, you ought to move toward the place called there. Where is there? In the there place, it was moving to a brook and being fed by ravens, drinking from the brook Chetrick, and then all of a sudden it dried up. Why? Because there was a famine in the land. And later the obedience to move him to the widow's house in Zarephath in a foreign land. 
Now, I read to you Romans 15 and 4 that says, whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning. What is God saying to us today? There is a thing we need to understand. There is a special place that God wants us to be and is called the Amen. Amen. We understand today for Noah, the there place was an ark. It could have held thousands of people, but because they did not believe the word of God in judgment, they were left out of the ark, and only eight souls went in to the ark. The place that we're looking at today also means that for Daniel, the their place was a prayer room that led to a lion's den. Are y'all hearing me? But when the king came to give greetings, he found out that Daniel was there, safe and sound. For the Hebrew boys, their place was a fiery furnace, heated seven times hotter than before. But because of their obedience, it led them to be promoted and it brought fame to the name of God. Why? Because they were in the... Amen. For Ruth, the their place was a field owned by Boaz, who became her husband and man the promise for her to enter the Jewish race. For David, the their place was locked in a cave to protect him from his greatest enemy, the first king, Saul. Then to be placed as the second king of Israel by the God of eternity moving him now to the their place of obedience and leadership. For the Apostle Paul, the their place was a prison cell and death after he became the greatest preacher in the New Testament for the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I told you through trials and tribulations, you led into the for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the their place was a cross called Calvary to save mankind from the penalty and sin of death that was caused in the their place of Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden. Glory to God for the their place. Why? Because God has given us directions now that we got to move in faith and see the results of victory by following God's instructions and moving to what place? There. Amen. Can you say it again? There. Amen. Because you're going to have to move today. Amen. Now, the their place. In other words, people of God, chapel of praise, there is that place in your life that finds you where God has placed you to learn his ways and mature in the things of God. And it's not always easy. Amen. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. The there place is that place in your life that finds you where God has placed you. Not always in a good season. The there place is his perfect will for your life and your ministry. And when you get there, you will know it. Amen. And when you miss it, you will also know it. When you get there, there are some things you will find out about the place of obedience. From this great chapter, chapter 17 of 1 Kings, I want to point out some major truths about the place called there. Let me ask you again today, are you there? If you aren't there, I want to encourage you through this message to get there. Get there and stay there for the blessings of God to fall on your life and your ministry. Looking at our scriptures today in 1 Kings 17, we see the man of God going through this, the their place of obedience. Now, I don't know about you today, but the Bible says it is better to obey than... All right, talk to me. Amen. Amen. We need to be in the their place of location, which was the brook, Shetra. We need to be in the their places of consequences, that when things dry up, we are still ready to hear what the Lord is saying in our lives. Then there's the their place of miracle, 
where when you can understand that the eternal God commanded ravens to send bread and meat day and night and the prophet received it because it was from the hand of God. Then there's the their place of directions. Go from the brook Chetri to Zarephath. And I don't know about you today, but many of us are not hearing what the Spirit of God is saying. He said, he that has an ear, let him what? That means you got to block out every distraction. you got to block out every hindrance. you got to move to the place where you're ready to hear a word from the Lord. Then there's the their place of faith. The place where God tells us now faith is the substance of things but the evidence of things. Though I don't see 2023, I'm moving in that direction. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, God sent us into this holy place to give us directions to move into 2023 by going in the direction he has chosen as the their place. Today, you will learn how to move into your their place in God's word and mature in the things of God to stand against the tricks of the devil, false preachers, and leaders. I don't know about you today, but it's time for you to know the word of God for your Amen. You know what the Bereans said? They said, okay, Paul, we understand what you said, but if you don't mind, we're going to look this up for ourselves. And when we look it up, then we're going to be ready to hear and obey the word of God. Going back to the lesson for today, we see God sending Elijah to the their place of promise. Now remember, Elijah was a prophet that spoke to the king and said to the king, it's not going to rain. Why? Because you and your wife are in idolatry and you brought shame upon God's word. So I'm speaking today as his prophet. It's not going to rain until you hear a word from me. And I want you to know the minute he said that, he had to run. Look at your neighbor and say, sometimes it's best to hide and live and face one and die. You get that at 3 o'clock in the morning. God said to him, go and hide yourself to the brook Chetra. For I have commanded ravens to feed you there. At the brook, you're going to drink from the water that's still there. And they will come on a day-to-day -day basis. I need you to know that he said that in Zarephath, there's a widow that I have commanded to sustain you there. When the prophet of God, Elijah, went there, as the Lord God commanded, he found out that the eternal God was as good as his word. How many of y'all know that he's as good as his word? Oh, I need a holy amen. I need a holy amen. If he said it, he's going to do it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so we find out that Elijah was sustained both areas of his life as he obeyed the word of God. Let me share with you today, when you get there, you will discover that God always does what he promised he'll do. He is a God who keeps all of his promises and none of them fall to the ground. I don't know about you, but when I look back and see, it was only a year ago that God opened the door of marriage. And then the year passed, and here we are again on December the 4th, and time has flown. But the love that God has given us is in the their place. Are you hearing me today? Let me share with you today that we are in a place now where you must get there. So I want you to say, I, regardless of circumstances, will get there. Say it again. I, regardless of circumstances, will get there. What you're saying, nothing is going to hinder me after today. Nothing is going to prevent me after today from moving 
into that place that God has ordained that I go. Listen to me carefully. Can I share with you this biblical truth beginning in verse 15 and verse 16? Hear what the word of the Lord is saying so that you can grasp this message. He said to us, when she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crews of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. What are you saying, apostle? That cruise of oil didn't overflow, but every day they went, it was there. That cruise of oil and meal kept them alive three years and six months. Why? Because they were in the... Amen. Listen to me very carefully today. The their place is a place of providence and believing in God. Some of you today have been disappointed. And let's be honest, this year was not all that it came out to be. And many times it was because you didn't listen to the Spirit of God. And you were listening to somebody else. I need you today to get yourself into a place where you enter the what kind of place? Before God commanded the prophet to go to Cherit or to Zarephath, the eternal God had already commanded the ravens and the widow at his command. In other words, before the their place, there was a need in Elijah's life to hear and obey the word of God. There's a need for you to continue to stay in a place where you can hear what God is saying. And the only way you can do that is to have leaders like in this place that will teach you the truth whether you like it or not. Hello, somebody. So today, I don't know about you, but the Spirit of God is saying, all I want you to do is to get yourself to the... Yes. Amen. Hear me today. Amen. As I hurry on and not keep you too long. Amen. You know, Paul preached until midnight. <laughs> Amen. Hello. So today, those that follow God's command will find the there and will find that they are serving a God who is not bound by limits of time nor space. If God can command ravens, dirty birds of prey, to bring food day and night, he can command the blessings in your house. And all you need to do is to get into the... Amen. Lord, help us today. Listen to me. He is the eternal God that transcends both as the God of creation and the God that will provide for our needs. Yes. All of our needs are in his hand. Yes. And he that controls both heaven and earth, when he speaks, it has to be done. Yes. And I don't know about you today, but look what he did for you. He woke you up this morning yes. and started you on your way. Yes. You got up the right mind, able to come out to the house of God and now move into that. Because Elijah was there in obedience, he got to see a miracle. I don't know about you, but when you think about ravens and who they are in the bird world, they're not very highly thought of. But God, who is in control of nature, decides what he wants to do. And that's why you and I got to learn to receive him and his word. Let him do what he wants to do. And not you do what you. Come on and say amen. So finally, we see saints, the leaders of God's house, that when you are there and you stay there. Look, they would say, I'm going to get there. And I'm going to stay there. You will be in a position to see his marvelous power manifested in your life and ministry as well. You will see today in our lesson, it is about many people who live out their entire lives and never experience his anointing. 
They're in the church, but they don't feel nothing. You ask your folk to lift their hands and they're wondering why you're telling them that. You ask folks to stand and rejoice and they're saying, I didn't come for all that. Yes, you did. You came to give him glory. You came to give him honor. You came to magnify his name. And as you magnify his name, he will glorify you and lift you up to a place where there's peace in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Open your eyes and shout hallelujah. Glory be to God. Those who are there will see the experience of the very power of God that moves them to maturity and growth in his word. Let me share this with you. We've been here since January and now it is December. What have you learned? Where is your faith now? Why is it that you lack the very thought that if he did it in January, he can do it in December. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Somebody ought to shout amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. So again, let me remind you. Remember the Hebrew boys? What did they do? They said, King, we're not going to bow. We understand the consequences. This is a fiery furnace. But because of the God that we serve, we'll take the consequences. Let me share with you. Many of you, if you take the consequences, you won't go through. Y'all didn't get that. I said, if you take the consequences, you're going to go through. It was through the fiery furnace that they were promoted. Let me share that again. I said, it was through the fiery furnace they were promoted. When they came out, the king knew that there was an eternal God in heaven that could sustain you even in the midst of a fiery furnace. Look at your name and say, no trial, no testimony. And that's our problem. We want the testimony, but we don't want the... Listen, if you want to be promoted, you got to get into what place? Yeah. And you got to stay there. Because yeah. you will move now to the will and the promise of God. Again, I ask the question, are you there? Have you reached that place in your life and ministry where you can honestly say, I'm in the will of God and that's where I want to be? Will other folk take you to another place when you know this is the place of blessing? Will other folk move you from faith when you know that's what's carrying you? All you have to do is get in the So in conclusion today, when you obey and get into that place called there, you will see the Lord God in Christ Amen. move in power and in glory Amen. on whose behalf? Amen. On your behalf. Amen. You will get to see the miracle working power of God in a day-to-day -day basis. Amen. Why? Because you move to the their place. Hear me today. When you obey and get there to that their place, you will see the Lord God move not only in power, but in his anointing yes, that will destroy yokes. Yeah. Now listen to me very carefully today as I close. I need you to understand that you cannot listen to anybody greater than the voice of the Lord God. Yeah. And when he speaks, he says, I want you to go through the fire. That means he said he won't burn. He said, I want you to go through the water. You won't drown. I want you to go through the floods. They won't overtake you. Yes, but what I need you to do is obey. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, let's obey. Let's obey. The word of God. The word of God. Amen. Amen. The real secret to his glory and experience in your life is when you understand that you must get into that their place. And once you do it, you will be like Elijah. Amen. Elijah depended on the brook Chetrin, but the brook dried up. But the word of the Lord said, Arise and get thee to Zarephath, 
For I have commanded a widow woman. Now the widow woman was there. And the Bible says she was gathering sticks because she and her son was preparing to what? Die. But what she didn't know was that their place for her was the prophet. And the prophet's word would bring life into them. I want you to know today that the word of God is here. All you need to do is grab a hold of what God is saying. Somebody give you praise right now. So Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. This is the time now, as we get ready to pray, for you to believe that, look, I've come this far by faith, leaning on the everlasting arm. And this God that has kept me from January to the fourth day of December has promised me that if I follow him, he will take me through the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And all you got to do now is follow. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for the their place. Get ready now for the privilege of saying, Lord, I'm yours. Try me and see. See if I can be completely yours. Stand on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. This is your altar call right in your seat. What are you saying, Apostle? It's time for you now to reflect. Look what God has done to me, for me, in me, around me. All of this year of the troubles and trials that have gone on, he's kept you. And now what he's saying to you for 2023 is I want you to move. Back up and get to the their place and stay there until I give you word to move to the next place. As we get ready to pray today, listen to me very carefully. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. But I know this, that if you want joy, you got to get into them. If you want peace, you got to get into them. If you want happiness, you got to get into them. Because only in the will of God are you going to be kept by the power of God? So as we get ready to pray, I prophesy to you today that as you move into the will of God and get into the their place, God's going to move on your behalf. Somebody ought to shout amen. Woo, somebody ought to shout amen. Notice what I said. As you move, as you allow him, he's going to make ways out of no way. He's going to help and bring you up and bring you out. As we get ready to pray, slip your hands up. Hallelujah. You surrender him. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. All that I have, Lord, I surrender. I want to move into that their place. I want to get there. I want to stay there. I want to be in the center of your will. In the midst of my trials. In the midst of my tribulations. In the midst of my downtime. As long as I'm in the their place. I realize and know that you're going to be there. To lift me. To bring me. To carry me. To sustain me. To feed me to give me hope in the midst of all of these situations. Now I praise you. Now I bless you. Now I give you glory. Come on church. Come on church. Come on church. Open your mouth and begin to bless him. Open your mouth and begin to thank him. Come on and give him praise for bringing you into the very place. For bringing you to a place of obedience. To bringing to a place of miracles, to bringing you to a place of direction, to bringing you to a place of instruction. Glory! Glory! Hallelujah. I want to praise him. I said you can come.